Hi, my name is Pop. This is video number three in Ubuntu Basics on swapping keys around. On this video I'm going to show how you can make some unusual keys. In video number one I showed how you could swap around the nine and the parentheses key and the zero and the parentheses key. In other words, using the parentheses without hitting the shift key first. That's sort of like an internal shift inside of a key. In video number two, I showed how you could get rid of that annoying mouse click, the left click, if you're in a library or something and driving people nuts. I shifted that key over to the five in the middle of the 10 key and then shifted the five over to this one. And the reason I did that was because if you're using the trackpad or mouse down here with your right hand, you sure don't want to be reaching over here with your left hand in order to hit the five. So I arbitrarily put it over here with this five key. However, you can put it to any key that you want to. Today I'm going to concentrate on two other kinds of swaps. The first one is going to be the so-called compose key. And I am going to show you how you can use the right alt key to make any of these symbols plus several hundred other ones that are uncommonly used. On the first line I've got yen, pound, euro, and cent. And on the second line I've got the actual division sign and then plus or minus. The third line, this is German. You would have no cause to use this unless you were studying German. Register, uh, registered and trademark. Quite often you might want to use half, two-thirds, three-quarters, five-eighths, seven-eighths, and so on. If you are using French or Spanish, you may want to use the grave, acute, or circumflex, and in Spanish this is called a tilde. And this is pretty easy to do. You have to go up and open up your keyboard and when you tap on the symbol up here you'll open up keyboard preferences and then you will go to layouts and in layouts you'll go to options. In options you'll want to go to compose key position. Open that up and tell it to use the right alt key. Now this is compose. Later I'm going to show you how to open up the so-called third level. And the third level is different than compose. First we're going to do compose. I am over here in the word processor and remember we said right alt key. I'm holding down the right alt key and I'm going to hit A and then I'm going to hold down the quotation marks. That's shift quote. And the two quotation marks vaguely re resemble those two dots. So you hit, let's do Alt Y, I just hit the Y, and equal. And that makes yen. And the yen resembles a Y with sort of an equal sign through it. Right Alt key L equal sign. Ah, it didn't work. Right Alt key L and a dash. That did work. Some of them have alternate input methods and they're 
They are very, very forgiving. You can go in either direction, in some cases, upper or lower case. Uh, the sense sign, right alt, capital C, let's try it again, capital C and a slash. Now that's a different kind of a scent. You can go to the internet and look up a whole bunch of these and here is a list of the Linux compose key sequences. This is just one website and there are a whole list of them and how you can get every one of these. You will not be using 99% of them. There is a, another website in Ubuntu that is a website which shows you how to use both the Compose keys and then also the third and fourth level. I will show you now how to get the third and fourth level. On an American keyboard, USA keyboard, we've got two keys on each key. You've got lower case and then when you hit the shift key you get upper case. But on in some countries you've got more than that. And I'm going to open up a German keyboard now. You can add these as you want to. And for instance in layouts here you just pick another co uh, country by hitting the add button. It starts off in A with Afghanistan and I have the German keyboard and when you open up options on the German keyboard see I already have compose and remember I had the right alt key but now I'm going to add the third level keys to choose third level and I'm going to also pick the right alt key they don't seem to interfere with each other because when you do the third level you can't compose close close I've got the German keyboard now show current layout when I zoom in on it you can see that each key now has four different things if I zoom in it'll be a little blurred here on A you've got lowercase a uppercase a and then when you hit the right alt key you've got the lowercase a e joined together and then with a shift you've got the uppercase a e since this is a German keyboard there are some differences from the American keyboard even in lowercase they use a S S double S looks like a capital B quite often another big difference is they have switched places with Y and Z. Another big difference on the German keyboard is they use some other keys, uh, other letters that we don't. They've got lower and upper case U with two dots over it, a diaresis, O with two dots, A with two dots. But you probably are not interested in German. But you can get with this third level an upside down question mark like they use in Spanish the plus or minus symbol look at all these other things you can use here I can't see them clearly any more than you can because this is a bit blurred when I zoom in to that extent 
But let's try it now. Now remember, I'm not using the compose function. I am using the third level function. I'm going to hold down Alt on my right and hit A, and there I've got AE. I'll zoom in on that. Alt, Shift for uppercase, now hit A, and it's a capital AE. I don't know what they all are. I mean, you've got to become familiar with them. Here I'm holding down right Alt and the W key. What the heck is that? I have no idea. Right Alt, Shift, W key. I guess that's a pound. Uh, right, Alt, and E. Let's just go through them and I'll, I'll type QWERTY. Uh, holding down the Alt key. Q-W-E-R-T-Y-U-I-O-P. Uh, open bracket, close bracket. I don't even have all of them apparently. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, right alt holding the shift key across QWERTY and as you see there are a great number of symbols at your disposal. Uh, I want to review real quick. In video 1 swap I showed how to to swap around the 9 and uh, the open and close parentheses 9 and 0 so that you don't have to shift. In video 2 I showed how to change the left click button of your trackpad first to 5 on the 10 key then to 5 again. Then at the beginning of this video I showed how to use the compose key and I told it to use left uh, right alt and you would hit then two keys in succession quickly afterwards uh, you'd hit the alt and then y and equal sign to get the yen l and equal sign to get the pound alt e and equal sign to get the euro and so on now that's the compose key. Then the last thing was to pull up the German keyboard which has four symbols on each key and to get the third level again we used the alt key on the right. Now this is tricky when you uh, pull up keyboard preferences you've got to go to layouts then options it's sort of buried in this and here highlighted compose key position it's highlighted because I've picked something if I had removed this I don't think it's highlighted anymore I've got no compose key and here key to choose third level it's highlighted because I have something selected. Now, keys to change layout. That means that there is a quick key press you can use to go back and forth between alternate keyboards. I have two. I've got the USA keyboard and I've also got the German keyboard. You can have as many as you want. Shift and caps cap locks is the key that allows you to quickly shift back and forth from one language to another. But you don't have to have that. You can go up to the top panel and just click one or the other. Well, that's all I got. This is video number three on Ubuntu Basics on how to swap keys around. This is useful sometimes, not very often. If this was helpful to you, I thank you very much. I have a whole bunch of other 
YouTube videos out. Most of them, I guess, are on Ubuntu Linux. Thank you very much.